What's up, everybody? How are we doing? Go ahead. John, what are the challenges of implementing a new offense when you're so uncertain of Kyler's status at quarterback? Yeah, we, um, we're going to build the offense around Kyler. And then uh, when he's ready to play, he's going to play. But um, we'll fit in a couple different things that we want to do to maximize his skill set. And then whoever ends up playing will tailor fit it around who's playing for us to start the year. Jonathan, we haven't had a chance to talk to you since the Super Bowl. Uh, I know it was your previous job. But what do you think happened in the second half? What were the reasons for the struggles? Yeah, you know, they, they made a lot of good plays in that second half. Um, we weren't able to get some stops when we needed to. Um, I obviously could have done a better job of coaching a couple things that I want out of the call. So um, tough to swallow when you look back at that because it's such a big stage and we didn't get it done uh, for the city, for Mr. Lurie, for Howie, and for the head coach. But um, learned a lot from it. And, uh, you know, you got to give credit to Kansas City. But uh, obviously, I could have done a lot better job with what we were doing. Uh, just how we set up a couple calls, you know, situationally, I could have done a better job with that. And, um, you know, really, that's that's what it came down to. I think situationally could have put our guys in a better spot than I put them in. Jonathan, with the college coaches that you guys have on staff, how do you lean on them and will you lean on them as you guys get into draft prep and earnest as a staff? Yeah, good question. We, um, you know, we're going to we're going to use everybody's brain that we can for information about the players and acquisition period that we're going to that we're started the process in today. Uh, so feel good about their knowledge base and we'll call a lot of people and talk to a lot of people and obviously the people in your building uh, you trust. So we're going to lean on those guys opinion when it's applicable and uh, try to make the best decision for the Cardinals. Jonathan, the Cardinals have one home win in the last 16 plus months. How do you go about reestablishing home field advantage at State Farm Stadium? Yeah, you know, that's uh, you, you want to you want to win every game that you play. You know what I mean? So I think that uh, I didn't know that stat off the top of my head, but uh, you want it to be a hard place for people to come in and play. And, you know, I've played against Arizona a couple times when they were kind of rolling and uh, it's a hard place to play. It's good fans. It gets loud. Uh, so we want to put a product on the field that we can establish, uh, you know, um, home field advantage comes from the team being good. So uh, that's what we need to do first. Jonathan, with, uh, with free agency, obviously Monty's going to have those decisions to make. But what's your role there? How much, how much say can you have in what guys you might keep, what guys you might want to chase? Yeah, obviously, if you talk to Monty, everything's going to be pretty collaborative. Um, so we're going to lean on his side a lot, and he'll lean on our side a lot. But uh, ultimately, it's not about who's making decisions. It's about we make the right decisions for the Cardinals. and. Uh, you know, the vision that I had of how I wanted to work with the personnel, the coaches, how we're going to work with the personnel side, vice versa, uh, aligns, you know, very much in the same. So, um, you know, just excited about getting that process, which we've done. We've, you know, started that. And, um, you know, we just got to be right on the people that we bring in to help our team win. John, in reference to the Super Bowl, you mentioned the specific calls. Um, so you had no problem with your game plan coming in. What specifically was the game plan to, to contain Patrick Mahomes? Yeah, Jeff, you know, I, I've answered two questions about that. I'm sorry I'm going to uh, not talk about that one. But, uh, you know, I've kind of moved on from that. But uh, just uh, as always, guys, when you're the, the leader of a unit or the leader of a team, everything that goes on on that field is my responsibility. And, you know, obviously them scoring what they scored, how the second half went, I didn't do a good enough job. If, we, if we're just looking, if we're just looking back at your entire tenure, um, you know, certain quarterbacks were able to have a lot of success against you guys. Um, what do you, you, looking upon that, attribute that specifically to? And is that something that, you know, looking forward is something that you feel like is something you could correct? Yeah, absolutely. I look at everything and use everything as a learning tool. So uh, we'll continue to evaluate that in the, the seat I'm in. And uh, hopefully I can help the defensive side with what some of the things that I could have done better and what some things that we did well, too. Uh, say it one more time. What, what type of messaging and advice did uh, Nick Sirianni have for you? Uh, yeah, he's been days? awesome. Obviously, you know the relationship I have with Nick, but um, be yourself, you know, and um, 
you know, we haven't had to spend too much time on when I when I ended up taking this job because of the prep that he did with me for the last two years that I've been with him. So, you know, extremely grateful to Nick for bringing me in, looping me in on a lot of those things. And um, like I said, he really taught me how to be prepared to be a head coach and um, using a lot of things that we talked about through the last couple of years um, and applying those to our team now. In general terms. Yeah, we just had a conversation. The, the whole, you know, the head coach um, with Nick and Howie and and Mr. Lurie, and uh, just uh, we had a conversation after the game and uh, decided that I wanted to pursue this job and and uh, went from there. Jonathan, when you talk about two players, impact players in the SEC, and, and Will Anderson and, and Jalen Carter. How do you go about comparing those two positions, outside linebacker and defensive tackle, and deciding what the best option, if it is the best option for you guys to pick three? Yeah, those are two premium positions with how we want to play defense in Arizona because we know that they're impact positions. Uh, so we'll evaluate those guys like we evaluate everybody. But uh, you know, those are premium positions. And, and uh, if they fit being an Arizona Cardinal, then, then we'll uh, Make that make that call. Yeah, his interview went extremely. He was he's 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 right there. He'll be a defensive coordinator the next year. Um, having known Coach Belichick for a little bit, um, obviously the respect I have for him and his mind. Um, wanted to talk to Demarcus, and I've known Demarcus for a couple years now through some relationships in the business. And his interview was very impressive, and I learned a lot. And um, I actually told Coach Belichick that after, you can tell that uh, Coach Belichick knows how to coach the coaches because this guy was on it. So that was, it was a really cool interview for me. When you were interviewing the Um, Jeez, I don't know, maybe seven years ago at a pro day. Um, where I really got to know him a little bit is we practiced versus New England uh, in Philly. They came for a couple of days, so I got to sit down and talk with them. And then um, just having a little bit of a relationship with him. You know, I know everyone pulls him in different directions, so I'm uh, aware of his time, but uh, just value the conversations and the advice that he gave me when I got when I got this this job. Jonathan, what drew you to Drew Petzing as your OC? What qualities does he have that you like? Yeah, you know how I, you know, I worked with Drew for four years, and and you can identify pretty quick quickly in a building with what with whatever role people are in. Uh, you can identify those guys as someone that can ascend uh, and take on more responsibility. And um, just really, you know, how he how he thinks about the game, the different systems that he's been in, the different positions he's coached. I thought that was pretty cool. You know, I like that. Um, and then really what it came down to was how he wants to play offense and how he saw the offense being built around Kyler and how he was going to maximize Kyler. So that's what it came down to. And, um, you know, I'm excited about that hire. Well, kind of a three sport athlete, is that important to you when you talk to prospects here at the Combine? You know, that was pushed on us when the high school that I went to, they wanted you to, they didn't want you to specialize in one sport. Um, so, uh, you know, everyone has a different path, but uh, it doesn't hurt that guys are good athletes and can do other things as well, because typically some of those skills from different sports translate to what they're doing. Um, but uh, if a guy's just played football his whole career and he's a he's an ass kicker, then that's cool too. What type of corner? <laughs> Yeah, good question. So, you know, I, I told Kyler, you know, I'm not going to rush him back, you know, because part of what makes Kyler so elite is is his, you know, are his legs. Um, so when he's ready to play, he'll play. I'm not, I don't know exactly the timetable right now. Everyone heals a little bit differently. Everyone comes back from rehab a little differently. Um, and everyone's different in that aspect. So I like the plan where he's at. I like what he's doing right now to get himself uh, ready to go. I, like I've, you know, I've told the story. The guy's attacking his rehab. Uh, he wants to be out there as fast as he can. As soon as he's he's ready, uh, then we'll put him out there. But you know, if he's not ready to go, we'll have a plan in place to play and win games with who we have playing quarterback for us.